Start here out here at the end of the limb, these little bitty wispy ones. Take it and snap it. Get a better grip on it. Take it and just snap it off in your hand. Kind of stacking them up straight. As you do, you take off all the little nubs to your left of the straight shaft and you snap it off. Snap it off. You work your way up the limb that way, collecting a handful of these small sticks like this. One little bitty piece at a time. Now you want it dry so it snaps off just like that in your hand. Don't snap, it ain't dry enough. We hadn't had any rain here in a little bit, so these are good and dry. And I want nice big handfuls of these fine sticks for what we're about to do. Just like that. Morning guys. Okay, today we're going to talk about twig stoves. It's a nice 52 degrees right now, perfect time to do a little bit of hot chocolate. So I'm going to take my one quart bush pot and I don't have an official stove for this. I don't know if Pathfinder makes one that fits on here like the two quart. If they have, I haven't noticed it. But I've already got something that'll work just as well. Now, in the past, and I'll show this up close in just a minute, this is three tent stakes shoved into a thin piece of plastic tubing. Okay, here's a better close-up of that. This is just simply a piece of plastic tubing I pick some up, some up somewhere. A lot of times hardware stores and all have these. And that's three steel stakes. And all I've done is they're a little more hooked. I took a pair of pliers and opened them up to the flat. Okay. So that way when I stick them in the ground, they form something like that in the ground. I can set my pot on the top of. But I can put all three of them together. Simply take and put them into that tube. Squeeze them and they friction fit and will hold on pretty well. That can be used as a twig stove and I've demonstrated that in the past. But what I'm going to use this morning is a U.S. Army canteen cup stove. Now they make these wonderful little folding, you know, uh, twig stoves for places where you can't carry fuel or whatever and you can't have an open fire, but you can have a control fire. But we're going to do it for this little bush pot this morning. We're going to take the canteen cup stove that clicks on the one that's hollow. Now I've cleared out an area that's sufficient to make sure I'm not going to have an issue. And I've gone down to bare dirt, so I'm not on top of loam or anything that could spread. I'm going to take a mini inferno because they're handy. And that's really the best way to start one of these stoves. Part part's getting can start back. At least for my wires are out of his fingers, you know. Take the puck, tear it to expose a few fibers, and I want to put it off to one side inside of the ring okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay sticks here it is on fire I'm gonna lay sticks above it like this to get it burning okay and rather than doing some sort of fancy something I'm just gonna use old-fashioned match this morning these old match safes work just fine for these type jobs down in there to one side, fire in the hole, 
They don't fire. Now, as you saw at the beginning, I'm taking and fine cracked up these sticks. Real small and fine. That's what I'm gonna start my fire with. Feed it, I should say. And make sure you make a clean break between each piece so it's individual sticks like, like a, a stack of uh, pencils cause these little bitty nubs that are sticking out cause a halo effect if you're not careful and you won't be able to get the flame to move from piece to piece because they're being held apart. Make it little individual sticks. They'll catch easy. You know we got like three limbs coming up. Snap them off before it's down just one shaft. It's easier to lay them in there and get them in position. You of course do want some chaos in there for a little bit of, because fire loves chaos. Same time we want it to get going. I'm just going to take a couple of handfuls of these. Crush them down so that they're a nice stack. And put them in that and lean them forward. Just like that. Nub sticking off, it's gonna hang up the problem. Now, as long as you've got flames above your fuel source, you know it's working okay. If you put too much on there and the flames disappear down into the bundle, stop adding fuel. Let it get going. Now, what we're gonna do here is make a fine bed of coals real quick. Notice I'm keeping half of my canteen stove thing here uncovered. So breakfast this morning is going to be apples and cinnamon followed up by hot chocolate and a half of an MRE spoon. Closing up my match safe, making sure it's secure. Putting it back in my pocket right now. Add sufficient amount of water to my pot. Put the lid on to help speed it. Put the bale handles facing back to me and then sit it up there just like that. But since it's got a lid on it, I ain't got to worry about cinders and stuff flipping back into the water. It won't hurt nothing. I can just get them out. But at the same time like this, it's still getting plenty of oxygen and plenty of heat up under the edge of that pot. But it's not smothering it. A lot of those twig stoves, if they don't have a sufficient gap on them, for putting a pot on, you actually smother it down and it doesn't burn very well. I want plenty of heat and efficiency here. Make sure it's kind of level too. That will ruin your day to get a pot of boiling water going and then you go to lean up and it suddenly collapses. Now I just keep taking these fine little sticks and stuffing them down in front of them. Now since that canteen cup stove has a opening where most people think to fit in sticks, uh-uh, you take a straight stick and you reach in there and you rake coals back up under your pot and feed sticks in the front and rake the coals underneath, see? That's what that side window's for, is to actually take a straight little stick and reach in there and rake coals back and add fuel to the front. And that thin little pot's already starting to hiss a little. See, I'm not generating a lot of smoke. Some, but not a lot. Not a lot of fuss and muss. Just a tiny little twigs.
Line pickup. Add more fuel. Go right back. As long as I leave half that opening free for flames to come up, there's tons of oxygen there. I don't have to worry about it. Very fuel efficient. And on the trail or just stopping for a quick bite, nothing to it. And over here beside me, I've got that big a pile of those little sticks already broke up. Now, pine cones. You got a glove on, because remember there's a thorn on a pine cone all the way around there. You can take and crumble it up and get the kernels like, like petals off of the cone and put in there as well and do that. But for what I'm doing today, I got plenty of fuel sources right here. Go ahead and get my apple cinnamon oatmeal ready to go. I'm utilizing my water, my pot, my fuel efficiently because I've got the fuel going in there. Snap me down another little handful right quick. Add them to the top. Little air. That side window. Do I see flames? It'll take just a few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. That water will be hot enough for what I'm wanting to do. It doesn't have to be boiling, just real hot to make my oatmeal and to make my hot chocolate. In fact, I don't necessarily need it boiling, to be honest, because then it would make it too hot to drink out of. With this one pot, uh, the one quart bush pot with the handles, I can then drink the hot chocolate out of pot. So I'm going to take it, water's hot enough, add to my oatmeal, and then put the chocolate in there, let it steep and cool just a minute, and I will drink back here from the back instead of that really hot front edge up there, making it where I can drink it. Another advantage of a hat. coming off the water now, so will not be long. Now notice my handles are still cool by doing it this way. All the heat's to the front. Plenty of heat there. I sat down, the wind's coming this way. I wanted to blow the smoke away from me. Now you also can end up being an eddy where the air is flowing around me. If it's coming directly from my back, it flows around me and that's, that causes a vortex right here. And the smoke wants to roll back to me. If I shift just a little bit to the side, with that wind going more past me, the smoke goes away from me, see? tiny little sticks. Now they make, you've seen tons of these, little bitty folding stoves and etc. But since the 70s, this is the kind of canteen cup stove I've used. I had an old Vietnam veteran show me how he used it. 
the heat up chow and stuff. And uh, it's always worked for me. This type of job. Flames go down a little bit, add a little oxygen in that side window. flames again. Now for traveling, camping, etc. As far as being able to just stop beside the trail right quick, this is very efficient because I don't need to build a big fire. The problem with building a big fire for a short stop is dealing with the fire when you're done. See, this will turn into ash very quickly. When it gets done, it's only going to be a fist sized ball. I can dig a little hole over here to the side, rake the ashes into it, pour a little bit of water onto it, and then bury it making sure I've left a big clear area on top of it and I can be moving on. If I build a full-size campfire, it's a much bigger deal to put out. Sort of a, think of it kind of like a canteen cup microwave, okay? I just need to heat up water. I, ain't, I don't need to do a whole lot. Just keep putting those little bitty sticks in. Just like this. The old vet that I knew back in them days, he had been a Korean veteran and then a World War, uh, be a Vietnam vet. And he talked about being in Ford bases and stuff and using a canteen cup stove like this. And uh, he would take the burlap that they would get and there was a type of wax that was used in some other operation. And he would melt the wax and dip the burlap in it and then make like a big like we make a cardboard wax candle for a fire starter he'd make them like a puck out of it to do this and of course they had other things they could burn but he said how he had put a uh, canteens up there and other little bitty pots and how he was able to cook bake whatever there in the field in his foxhole where, you know, you're not on duty up on the wire. This is in a little bitty base, but you got your own little hooch. And he said he would get his wife to send him um, muffin mixes and cake mixes and cookie mixes and stuff like that pre-made up, and she would put it inside the body of a flashlight because it was a stainless steel flashlight you could buy cheap in them days. She'd pull the guts out of it, she'd put the materials in it, seal it up tight and send it to him in Vietnam. So he could sit there and make treats and stuff in the field. That's the reason he got the nickname Cookie. Oh yeah, we got plenty of bubbles, we got a low boil going. Just a minute or two more and it'll be time to pour. any more fuel to it now because I'm so close. My handles are still cool to the touch. Now I get over here, air place, to pour my hot water into my cup. I don't want to be holding it and go to do it. I risk scalding myself, don't I? 
I want to open it up, but leave the lid attached. Now, if it was really, really cold, if I have one of the old canteen cup liners that's got the, the lining inside of it, I can use it as a cozy. I can put this down inside of that canteen cover and then pour the water and seal it all up and use it as a cozy to keep it from getting cold. back on, let it steep. I'll put it here in the shadow of my foot, uh, blocking the wind off of it. That's left me with a nice hot low boil of hot water down there and now to be luxurious we'll do two packages of Swiss Miss cocoa and what do you get when you use four packages pudding we used to if you look at a lot of the old Boy Scout uh, things from the day. They talk about taking cocoa and making a, a Boy Scout pie, which was a really thick pudding, and then they'd take graham crackers, melt a little bit of butter, make a um, crust inside one of the mess kit pots, and then they would make the thick pudding on top of it and let it cool, and it was a pie that they'd make in the field. up my hot chocolate. And I think you can see the steam rising off that. So I've got a half pot of hot chocolate. Let that cool. And taking a stick, I'll go in one of the side holes and I'll remove my stove. A little bit of that igniter left. Set it over here and let it cool. Now the coals. Spread them out a little bit. The three parts of a fire are three triangles, remember? Heat, fuel, oxygen. If I lose any one, fire goes out. So I spread it out to lose the heat. Let that little handful of coals right there cool down. Hopefully by the time I'm done eating, you can see the steam rising off of my breakfast. By the time I'm done eating, it'll be out where I can just take my heel, kick a little hole, put all the ashes into the hole, bury them at least a half inch down, Take some canteen water, put it out, stomp it flat, pile dirt on top of it, and make sure I got a two foot circle around it, and I'm back on the trail. Well, thank you for joining me this morning, guys. I just wanted to share this with you of the idea of how to do a quick meal with just a canteen cup stove. Now, these are still available in surplus, they're usually just a couple of dollars. And as you saw, they hook to the bottom of a canteen cup and go into the canteen cup carrier. That one is probably 10, 15 years old, but you can find them. Now, there's another version, be aware, that's solid on the bottom. That's for gel, that uh, like, uh, like hand sanitizer gel to burn on it. I don't like them. I like these open ones because I can lock it onto the canteen cup, and if I'm trying to actually cook, not just do this, but actually cook something, I can build up a bed of coals over here and... I've got a fire anyway, I can rake me a bed of coals off, set it down directly in the coals. 
And if those coals start to go out, rake me out a new pile and just jump to the new one and keep a continuous heat and fire. But like this, separate, where I can just lay on top of it, it's a twig fire stove this way. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If you like content like this, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys. Time for breakfast. Oh yeah, that's good.